we're trying to do is eliminate this round part up on top. But whatever you believe that is the, uh, the edge of the grip cap, be consistent. When it comes to length, I think I've heard it all. Some customers call me up and tell me that the, the length of their club was X amount of distance from the end of the grip until the start of that little black thing above the hosel. Unfortunately, the length of the grip, the hosel, the ferrule, etc., can all differ. So there's really only two points of reference that, that are viable, the ground and the edge of the grip cap for measuring club length. As I alluded to before, if the 48-inch ruler is not positioned correctly, your measurements may not be accurate. Let's say for the sake, sake of argument that we lowered the butt end of the club and subsequently the ruler too, so that the club head rests on the heel. We will say that this is the, uh, the flat position. Let me go back to the um, slide where we have the incorrect um, setup, and the, it'll demonstrate this a little bit better. Okay, Or you can have the butt end of the, the club raised as well as the ruler so that the club head rests out near the toe. This position is considered too upright. Okay, this is very important. If you set the club with the incorrect lie, then one of two things will occur. Number one, the club resting on the heel um, or the ruler's position too flat like what's on the left, then your measurement will be shorter than it should be. Or number two, um, like the picture on the right, if the club is resting out on the toe or the ruler is too upright, the length you will be measuring will be longer than it should be. Even two degrees one way or another can amount to a quarter inch difference. So even being careful, one could be off as much as a quarter inch or more. While this may not sound like very much, it is when we talk about club head specifications. This method is used in all cases except for putters that the shaft is not located at the heel, which we will discuss next. So let me move the slides here to our next one for it to come up. Okay, there we are. What makes the putter length different is the attachment of the shaft to the head. In all other clubs, the hosel and the shaft are located at the heel of the club, but on a putter, it could vary greatly. It could be located in the heel, and if so, the length is measured just as outlined previously. However, most aren't. The hosel on an answer style putter may be inward one inch from the heel. You have center shafted putters where the shaft intersects the center of the putter head. Lastly, there have been putters with the, ha the hosel out near the toe. One such example is the Bass Ackwards putter designed by the legendary Jim Flood. But this shouldn't discourage you from measuring the proper length. The key, whether the shaft is straight or curved, is to follow the back side or the side of the shaft like, like what's pictured here. Okay, I'm not an expert photographer, but this should give you um, the idea. Unfortunately, the steel shaft blends in with the, uh, with the silver 48-inch steel ruler, so you might have to look closely at the screen. So we have our side view, and we're going along the length, or the, uh, the uh, the angle of the shaft, not necessarily where the bend is down here. You may not be able to see that, but we're going in the, like a, a, a parallel axis to the shaft. Okay. Now there are a couple other methods used to measure uh, club length that I want to make you aware of. The United States Golf Association the USGA has a method outlined in the rules of golf. The USGA uses an apparatus that has a piece of angle iron that acts as a stop. This forms at a 60 degree angle from the horizontal. Why 60 degrees? Probably because this was the midway point of lies from years past when the driver was 56 degrees and the wedges were 64 degrees. Plus 60 degrees is a good even number. 
In addition, they measure at the very end of the grip cap and not to the edge. This difference amounts to approximately an eighth of an inch in, in the addition of the grip cap. The USGA does have a limit of 48 inches for any club besides the putter, which has no length limit. However, they do exclude putters uh, from using this measurement te technique. Yet another method is from the Long Drivers of America, or LDA for short. Excuse me for making a drawing with an iron when the LDA is all about the big stick, but the concept is going to be the same. They measure the length by placing the shaft or the club flat against the wall with the toe of the cl club positioned on the ground. This will result in a much longer length than the two other methods uh, mentioned previously. Depending on the lie of the driver, you may also have an effect on the final length. The LDA has a 50-inch length limit for sanctioned long drive competitions using this particular method. And if you're wondering what the difference is, it's approximately one and a half to one and three quarters on the modern driver. In club assembly, it's important to accurately measure the length, too. You can measure the shaft length with the, the shaft epoxied in the club head or simply insert it fully into the hosel with the shaft bottoming out in the bottom of the bore. Um, there are reasons why you might prefer one over the other, but like many procedures in club making, there are more ways to complete the task than one. Let me tell you this from experience. If you do measure the club length without the shaft being epoxied in place, then you need to uh, doubly or make doubly sure that the shaft is marked in some way that you know which club it goes into. Nothing is worse than putting the shaft in the wrong head and having it come out short because you may have to start all over from scratch. Sure, they make shaft extenders to fix the problem um, like these, but if you've already tip trimmed the shaft for a six iron and stuck it inside the five iron by mistake, then the shaft will be stiffer than it's supposed to be. Just like measuring the length on assembled golf clubs, you have to be extra careful that the lie of the club is correct when measuring the partially assembled club length uh, using your 48 inch ruler. And when measuring club length without the grip, you want to allow an eighth of an inch for the thickness of the butt cap or grip cap. Actually, that measurement on most grips is closer to 3 16ths of an inch, but with the 48 inch ruler, they're normally graduated in eighth inch increments. If you fail to account for this extra eighth or 3 16ths of an inch, then the club will be longer by the same amount. But as I mentioned before, if you're consistent, then this is not going to be detrimental. <coughs> 